and marker. Okay. Oh my God, you guys, I have not done one of these videos in so fucking long. I almost forgot even how. Um, so hi, hello. If you, oh, let me, let me make sure I am looking good enough. Oh my God. It has been, okay. Ooh, hello uglies. Oh my God. I love this top. Okay. Sorry. I need to cool down. It's very, very hot. It's summertime y'all. It's almost August. Okay. So first things first, this is, oops. <laughs> so first things first, this is going to be a makeup video. Um, I know my sound is going to be really different. My space is different. Everything is different. I will explain. I will reveal all in just a little bit. Um, but I just had to start filming because, um, I forgot how long setup takes and like what amount of work setting up for filming is. And I have to tell you, um, I was a little bit struggling. Okay. Um, yeah, I was, I was seriously struggling there for a second because it has been, it's been almost a year since my last video. I didn't intend to go almost a year. Um, but life like completely got away from me. Like when I say life got away from me, like, girl, life got away from me. And I had all these plans for videos I was going to do in 2022. I had all these scripts written. I was so ready. I was like, just all these ideas, all these thoughts. And then like, just everything got away from me. And then February, me and my mother took a vacation and, um, to visit family. And then we fell in love with the place. And so we decided we have to move. And so everything after February from February to June has just been like moving. And now that we're moved and I'll tell you where in a minute, don't worry, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. But now that we're moved, everything is like unpacking and so much working. And so it's just like, everything has just been about the move about doing all of that. I have not felt like I've had time for anything. I've been wanting to make videos for so, so long. So here I am. I am back. I have so many different ideas and plans um, and thoughts. I've already got a script in the work for August. So like we are good to go. We are getting on the ball again. Um, but it's just been a little bit tricky to get back into the swing of things. And like I said, um, you know, and this was like, by the way, I didn't just move. I moved I have halfway across the country. Basically I moved like two, it's two States over, but it's halfway across the country for me. Like I'm in a whole different time zone now and it's been, it's been amazing and I love it here. And I'm so, so happy that we moved, but it's also been so incredibly like stressful this move. It's been such a big move and it's taken up so much like space in my mind and so much like, thoughts and effort and like work and planning. And so it's just been like, oh, it's been so crazy. So naturally that has taken over like everything I've been doing for the last few months. So yeah, that's, that's just like a baseline for everything that's going on. There's been a lot of changes. I'm going to talk about all of them. Um, mainly this video is going to be a Q and a, because I did ask, um, my fans on Tumblr and my subscribers and friends, um, basically some questions and things they wanted me to answer. And so I will be getting into that. I am going to do a makeup look. Don't you worry. It's all, it's all coming together, but I just had to get that intro out of the way first that I am so sorry that I've been gone so long. I really, really have missed doing videos. I am back. I am going to be making videos more consistently. I shouldn't promise anything that I don't know for sure I can do, but I have plans. So like bear with me, girl. Bitch, finally, we can get this started. Okay, get this party started. Oh my God, please stop, girl. For those of you who don't know, um, I am not like super great at making my makeup straight, which hello, I'm not. So why would my makeup be? But um, I'm not super good at making my makeup straight. So I actually use blue painters tape as like a way to um, give myself a very dramatic kind of wing, I guess, because I can't do a wing. I actually don't use eyeliner. I know that's 
like a makeup no-no, but I'm kind of at the point in my life where I'm 30, bitch, and I want to just do whatever the fuck I want with makeup and just have fun with it. So that's what the fuck we're going to do. That's what the fuck we're going to do. Sorry. My inner Adore Delano came out. Okay. So I'm using this. Oh, I don't want to show you my closet, but I'm using, yeah, you guys are in the closet right now, by the way. So that's kind of fun. Um, this whole setup is, oh God, I can't even. Okay. So where do I even fucking start? I guess I should start with a move first. Cause that's like the the biggest thing oh okay so the move is probably like the biggest thing that's going on right now so that's probably the thing everyone wants to know about the most um so i you know i have family where i am now and again i will reveal i'm not trying to be secretive to be like a dramatic reveal i'm just um so i had a bunch of my family not a bunch i had a, a few members of my family move um to a small, not small, like moderately sized town in Texas, in South Texas, um, probably a few, actually some of them, the first, like my cousin moved up in or down, I guess, in, um, two years ago, three years ago, something like that. And then my aunt, his mom moved, um, like a year after that, basically. And so I have a bunch of family who lives down here now. And, oh my God, I'm knocking stuff over. Can I not? Um, I have a bunch of family who lives here now. And so it was just one of those things that were like me. Ugh. I am dropping shit. Like, what is going on? Can I get it together so I can film this damn video? Hold, please. Okay. Anyway, um, let me spritz that with some sanitizer. Because I, I just went through the process of cleaning my brushes so that I could have clean brushes. And then I dropped them on the fucking floor. Oh, God. Okay. Anyway, so I had a bunch of family move to Texas, like in the last few years. And so me and my mother were like, oh, we want to come visit, you know, see what it's like, whatever. Cause we've never really been to Texas because, you know, just doesn't seem like it's nothing I expected of like a, a place to call home since I am uh, a big trans les. And um, so I was like, oh, this is, you know, in my head when I was like before I was like, oh, this is not going to go well. But as it turns out, we fell in love with the place and decided we were going to move. And so for, we went from Vegas to a area just outside Houston. And so that was a huge, huge move. Um, took up so much of this tape is coming up and I'm so mad. I hope it stays long enough. Do I want to do a green eye or a purple eye? I'm going to do a purple eye. Um, so I, so we fell in love with it and decided we're going to move. And that was in, um, that was in the mid to end of February. And so we we're like, okay, well, our lease is up where we're living now in like mid June. So that's when we're going to move. We got to figure everything out. And so we did. And so that's just what's been taking up all the time. So I now live in Texas of all places. I know shocking, right? Um, I feel like everyone's moving here. Like I know, um, Tati just did a whole thing about moving to Texas and I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. We're moving to the same place. And of course, bunny has always lived here. I still watch her a little bit. Um, so yeah, I, I can't, I never imagined this for myself, but here we are. I mean, honestly, a lot of things that are in my life right now, I never imagined. I have a whole video that I want to do just about like what I've, you know, how much I've grown and what I've learned over the last 30 years, because let me tell you guys, um, my life has just taken so many adventurous turns just in the last couple years, like just since turning 28 to 30 has just been like life-changing. I really truly believe like, did I just, oh my God, I hope you can still hear me. I just realized I put my makeup palette on top of my microphone. So I hope you heard any of that. Oh my God, Sissa, what the hell? It's because I don't know how to do this anymore, apparently. Um, so I'm putting this very, very light periwinkle in the crease. Um, I probably should put this up top, but I forgot how to do makeup even apparently. I 
love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need a bank no I'm funded play the game like it's nothing I'm always so, okay we need to get to the questions I know Okay, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing with this eye. Like, I just need you to know this is a journey that we're going on together because I fully don't know where, where I'm going. Um, okay, so I asked... I asked a few people on my Tumblr to answer the age old question or not answer the question. Oh my God. I'm so to ask me some questions, um, that they have just about like butch femme things. Um, because that's kind of just what this channel has become. And that's what I want to talk about all the time. So I wanted people to ask me specific questions to that. So I did get some questions. I will be answering them. Um, let's get into this. So the first question was, um, how do you meet other OFOS butches and femmes nowadays? Question, that's the first part. The second part is, what is your opinion on modern femme for femme culture? And do you think that there's a difference between femme with two M's and an E or just to F E M. Okay. So the first part of that question, how do you meet other OFOS people? So first of all, I just want to explain for those of you who don't know, OFOS stands for old fashioned, old school. Um, it's a whole like subculture within the butch femme community. Um, and I mean, honestly, I think the answer to that question is kind of the same answer I would give of like, how do you meet anyone? And like, it's, it's building online communities like on Tumblr. And I honestly, like that's, that is primarily, I think a very big way to meet people is just creating online spaces. I know that sounds maybe, I don't know, maybe silly, but like, I feel like creating online spaces is kind of the best way and the simplest way to meet people because you can find people who are like-minded, who want the same things you do, who are looking for the same things you do. And like specific, looking specifically for old fashioned, old school folks, like that is something I found just in the butch femme community in general. And just like being a part of the community, I've met different people who kind of are a part of that. For me, the specific reason that like I have identified as like old fashioned, old school is because and it relates to this next question about like, how do I feel about um, the femme for femme thing? And like, I actually, I had a point where I was gonna make a whole video about this, to be honest, because I'm really, really passionate about it. Initially, when I first like kind of heard the term or thought about the term, I didn't have any actual thoughts about it. I was just like, whatever, you know, to each their own, it's not for me. But then, it's become more apparent as I've heard more from, you know, butches that I'm friends with, butches and studs that I'm friends with, that actually a lot of people who identify as like very femme for femme are um, treating butches like shit and treating them very, very poorly and acting like, you know, if you are someone who is into butches or into studs or into like lesbian masculinity at all, that you are like regressive and setting the community back and like just all this kind of toxic shit. And to be honest with you, it's just reached the point where I do not trust people who openly identify as femme for femme. And there's a whole conversation about like, you know, in, in the question, it was like, do you think there's a difference between someone who says femme with two M's and an E or someone who is like F E M? I think femme with two M's and an E is very specifically I, to me. I don't think there's a way to divorce it from the butch for femme, you know, butch femme count like, um, community. I don't think there's a way to divorce those two. So for me, that is what that means. So if you're someone who says you're femme for femme, like F E M, I think, but I don't know. I think it's all in, it's all semantics to be honest. But like, again, you know, my biggest con point of contention is just that like, you know, they are disrespecting butches and studs. And for me, that's, you know, that's just unacceptable. And I'm not saying all of them do, like, I can't, I, I don't want to paint with a wide brush. I'm not saying all of them do, but I have heard just through, you know, butches and studs that I know who have said, like, I've never had a good experience with femmes and like, you know, they treat me like shit and all of this other stuff. And it's always these girls who, 
you know, paint themselves as like being femme for femme and like all of that, or who will say things to other women like, you know, oh, it's so regressive that you identify as, you know, a, a femme for butch or that you like butches and all of this. And like, the, listen, um, one thing you're not going to fucking tell me is who I can be attracted to. And I know there's people who want to be like, oh, if you're going to just date a butch, like you should just date a man. Bitch, I've dated men. I don't want to fucking date men. I am not attracted to men any longer. So maybe get off my ass. And like, thankfully, no one's said it to me because I'd fully like rip their heart out through their ass. But like, ugh, God, I don't know. And like, again, I was when I originally was going to make the video. It, it, it's hard when you're making like a video essay because you feel like you really have to. Um, I don't want to say present all sides, but there is kind of a feeling that like you should be trying to take things in good faith, um, which not a lot of people do. I feel that I should be trying to take things in good faith, but it's very hard to take like the femme for femme thing in good faith when I know that they're so disrespectful. And uh, granted, by the way, I don't think everything should be taken in good faith. There's plenty of subjects that like should not be taken in good faith. But like when it comes to uh, lesbian specific things or gay specific things, like I do want to try and take as much as I can in good faith or at least argue in good faith, even if not everyone is going to do that because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say I don't want to be biased because I am very clearly like to some degree biased. I think everyone's biased. Like there's no getting around that. We all have our biases, but I, I do want to say like, I try and look at certain things from other angles, but like, if you're going to be shitty to someone or tell, you know, other people who love, if you're, you know, if you're going to be shitty to someone who identifies as butch, or you're going to be shitty to people who love butches, then like, like you're clearly just a, a piece of shit to me, as far as I'm concerned. Like that's, that is non-negotiable. That is non-arguable. That is like, there's no debate there for me. So like, you know, as much as I would like to say, like, I wanted to go into it with, I don't know, maybe some understanding, like, I just can't. And, you know, I'm sure that there are probably some people who identify as, you know, femme for femme who like femmes and that's their attraction, who are not bad people. You know, I do have friends who are kind of in the middle. They're not necessarily, you know, butch or femme and so and I, I think that's something important to talk about too like as long as you're respectful of butches and lesbian masculinity I don't have a problem with it like if you're someone who's like I don't identify as butch I don't identify as femme I just like who I like and that's whatever like I think that's perfectly acceptable not every lesbian is going to be a femme or a butch like I think that is something that needs to be talked about a little bit and I know that I have not like even in my own channel I have not discussed that because like primarily I feel like my channel is now um you know very much talking about you know the butch femme community and especially just my love of butches and that is for a purpose because I think it's important and I think it's not talked about enough and I think there is a lot of negativity around you know butches and studs and lesbian masculinity you know I think that is something that is two things can be true not everyone who is a lesbian is either going to be a butch or femme but at the same time I think you know you still I still want to be talking about butches and studs and you know lesbian masculinity because it is something that's so important and they are you know people who don't receive enough love in my opinion and I want to change that and that's what I do on this channel that's what I love to do on this channel so you know multiple things are true so I think if you're someone who is like you don't lean either way of like feminine or like you don't identify as a femme but you don't identify as a butch but you're still like you know as long as you're respectful that's all that matters like I'm not gonna say like oh these people are bad but I think there are a lot of people who disrespect you know butches and studs and mask leaning lesbians who say that they're a femme and I'm like do not take a word that is primarily used to 
show the counterpoint and love of butches and studs and use it against them. Like that's, that's fucked up to me. Like you're taking a word that frankly doesn't belong to you and has primarily been used to show love to a group of people. And you're using that to show hate to them to the point where they don't even associate that word with what it was always meant for. And like, that's what pisses me off to be honest with you. So like, Again, I would also like to say, like, I'm not I'm not that person who thinks that butch or stud. Well, not stud stud. That's a whole different thing. I'm not a person who thinks that butch or femme are like exclusive to the lesbian community. You can be bi and be butch or femme. I've said that before. You can be any flavor of sapphic and be butch or femme. You can also be a gay man and be butch and femme. Like that's that's a whole thing. That is not something that is exclusive to lesbian circles. I just feel that if you are going to be someone who identifies as femme, you better be also someone who, at the very least, respects butches. You don't have to be in love with them. You don't have to be attracted to them. That's whatever. But you damn well better respect them. And that's that's that on that. Um, <laughs> like, that's that's, I think, the bare minimum you can do. And if you can't respect them, leave them the fuck alone. Don't just go in there like, oh, you're so blah, 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 because you're attracted to butches. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, I, I don't need this. Nobody needs this. Nobody deserves that. Like, mind your own fucking business, period. Okay, so this... <laughs> After after all that, this and I, I'm, look, I'm done with two eyes and one question. Um, the second question is, who was your first butch crush? How did it make you feel having these feelings? Oh my god! So okay, so this is like actually a really I love this question, but it's actually super super complicado because anybody who knows me and knows my story and knows like my experience kind of knows that like. You know, this 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 glamorous diva you see before you was not always who I was. And like I I had a time in my youth where I felt like, you know, oh, I guess I'm you know, everyone says, you know, you're a boy. So I guess that's what I have to be. And everyone says you're gay and I feel like I'm attracted to men. So I guess that's what I am. And so, you know, there was a whole time period in my life where I identified as a gay boy. So to some degree, I have answered this question in another video. I did a, um, I did a whole video about my lesbian awakening basically. And, um, the long and short of it is I, in high school had a lot of lesbian friends and I, I, you know, I actually joked at one point that I was like, um, I was like, I'm the lesbian equivalent of a fag hag. I'm a dyke hag uh, because all of my friends were lesbians in high school, like pretty much all of them. And it was so wild to me. And it wasn't like something I tried to do. It wasn't something I went out of my way to find. It just, we just became friends and they were all lesbians. And I was like, damn, like where, where are all the other gay men at this school? Cause I felt like very on my own or like gay boys. Cause like I was not a man, but I felt very on my own. And that was like, that was kind of hard. That's a whole other topic. But, um, there was this one girl who I, I can't say for sure that she was butch. She was definitely mask leaning. Like she, would I th I think she I knew she played baseball she always always came to school looking like a fuck boy which explains my love of fuck boys to this day but, but also um you know she sometimes came in a suit like she liked to wear that vibe like she was one of the guys if you will um one of the bros let's say she she was very much one of the bros and uh you know she'd always like talk very openly about all the girls that she was with and like all of this shit. And like in my head, I was like, ew, girls, like, uh, like I was, I was that, I was that like nightmare fag. I am so sorry. But anyway, um, I was that bitch. I did that. I cannot, I'm not going to deny it and pretend like I didn't like, I'm not proud of it, but that's just who I was. And I'm not gonna like sugarcoat history just to make myself feel better. Like that's just how I was and that's not okay. And I'm not proud of it, but you know, we learn, we grow. So, um, 
yeah, she would always tell these stories and I was always like, oh, okay. Like, you know, but also like secretly like, oh God, I kind of, kind of wish I was those girls because she was like very much in charge, let's say. And I'm like, oh God, I wish I was that girl. I want to be that girl. And I didn't, I had no understanding of like what I was thinking per se and like what any of that meant and I don't want to say I don't want to imply that I was like naive necessarily but like I didn't really understand how I felt because to me I was like well I you know I, I'm gay like that's just what it is like I like guys so that's you know that's that's what it is so um you know but I, I remember very distinctly and I've talked about this before on the channel that like she had a thing about girls who wore um Juicy Couture, uh, Juicy Couture, um, perfume. And I was like, you know, I don't know. I just, I always wanted to wear it because of her. And I know that's so funny. And I have since become that girl who I do very much enjoy Juicy Couture. And that's, we're not going to, we're not going to delve too deep into that, uh, into that little, uh, part of my psyche. But yes, um, I was very much like, I always, I don't know. I just, there was some part of me and I didn't understand what it was or what it meant. And I didn't want to think too hard about it, but I was very much into her. Um, so I kind of like, I can't talk about that subject without bringing that up because for me, like it was just such a part of, um, like my coming out experience and it was such a part of like that was my I would call that my first like crush on another girl um that like I didn't know what it was at the time but that was kind of my first like moment of like oh okay lesbian masculinity like this is this is sickening um and I mean that in the drag queen sense not like gross um but I was like oh okay cool you know I can get down with this and then um I think my first like first first butch cr or crush on a butch specifically specifically like it has to be um taken taro like i've talked about this so many times i just there is something about her that i just cannot i cannot get over it i just am so like oh i just love her so much she's so funny and again it was one of those things that like i did not initially realize what it was um I was kind of like, in my head, I was like, oh, you know, she's really cool. She's really funny. Like, that's, you know, I really enjoy watching her. I want to see more of what she does. But, like, it was never a obvious thing in my head. Like, it was never like, oh, yeah. Like, I just have a crush on her. Like, I didn't, I, I don't want to say I didn't have the language because that's not the case. But I just didn't, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't know if I just was not thinking or didn't think it was possible or just, I don't know. I don't know like what point, um, why I didn't like realize it sooner. It was just kind of like, it, it just didn't seem like a thing. And I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I would say she's the first like crush where I started to realize like, Oh shit, that's what this is. So yeah, I think that was like my first, like, real feeling of like oh wow this is like a crush and then I was like you know I, I for a while I kind of thought okay well I guess I'm bi because you know I, I just I wasn't I was I felt okay so oh god sorry I'm like all over the place there was a part of me that like felt very trepidatious about using the word lesbian because I didn't want to step on anyone's toes and like it was such a you know it wasn't so, at first I was like I don't know like I know I like women right now or like I'm, I'm more attracted to women like that was my 2020 life but I was like I don't know like am I a lesbian am I just someone who is like you know, bi, but more attracted to women right now. And like, because there is, a, there is a real thing about like cycles of being bi. And like, sometimes you're more towards one side and sometimes you're more towards the other side. And like, you know, things change when you like both. And so I was like, okay, well maybe that's what it is right now. I'm just like, 
I'm just really into women right now, but maybe it won't be that way forever. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to use a term that may be not the case. And also like at that point in my life, I had already come out three fucking other times. So there was part of me that's like, oh my God, girl, can we really be doing this again? Can my gender or sexuality be changing this much this often? Like, isn't this too much? Like, you know, so there's that factor, I think too, as well. So, you know, it's like, it's like, is it, you know, are we doing too much here? Um, so yeah, there was, there was that whole factor of it as well. Of just like, just like feeling like, girl, you have come out like three other times at this point maybe maybe reel it in (laughs) um you know so it was just it was just so many factors of like feeling very like is this what this is like I've never felt this way that I like knew or acknowledged about women thankfully by the time I like realized I had a thing for like Tignataro specifically and like Butch's and masculine lesbian masculinity thankfully by that time i was kind of like cognizant enough that it wasn't like a huge huge shock but it was a shock in the sense that i was like okay like i guess this is the thing now (laughs) like it it did catch me a little bit off guard like i'm not gonna pretend like i was totally prepared for this or totally expecting it like it was it was surprising yeah um but i think that's true of any like anybody who has ever realized something about their sexuality or their gender or whatever, like sometimes it does catch you off guard. I think people kind of assume, and and listen, there are people who know from a very, very young age and more power to them. But some of us take a very, very long goddamn time to realize things about themselves. And, uh, you know, that's legitimate too. Like sometimes you just take a minute to realize that you're, you know, actually this way. And, you know, there has been, there's been definite times where I have thought like, God, how much different would my life have been if I had known, like had the language the first time I felt like, you know, I'm a girl. What would my life have been like if I had just been able to be who I was at like six years old rather than like, 22 years old you know what I mean like how would my life have been different I can't help but feel like you know yeah in some ways it would have been more challenging but like it just it would have been so much different my life would have been so much different and I can't change it and I don't regret it necessarily but I do sometimes kind of wish like I could have been that girl who just knew and had the language for it at a young age and got to be out and got to be herself because, you know, I took a very long time, I feel, and I, you know, I'm still very young. Like, I'm not going to pretend like, oh, I'm 30. My life is over. I still, I still think my life is just beginning in so many ways. But like, what I mean is, It just, it would have been nice to be able to, like, have this information and, you know, figure this out sooner, I guess. And again, you know, it begs the question, had I known all this sooner, had I had the language for it sooner, you know, how would my life have been different? I was going to a high school that was primarily lesbians. Like, maybe I could have had a girlfriend. I don't know. Um, And it's... uh, you know, I can't, I can't go back. I can't change it. It is what it is. Um, but there are times when I think about it that I'm like, damn, you know, (sighs) my life would have been so crazy different if I had just had the language for these things younger and I just didn't. So I, I really applaud the courage and the strength of young people today who know who they are, who know what they want. And let me tell you something too. Um, I think this is so important. Do not ever be afraid to change your mind. Do not ever be afraid to explore different options within, you know, gender and sexuality. Like it doesn't have to be set in stone. I think there's so much of this idea that, you know, 
all right, you came out once, you have to stick to that. And like people do get very, some people get upset when people like realize something different about themselves. But you know what? Fuck them because they don't have to live your life. And that's just the tea. Like, you know, nobody has to live your life. Nobody has to do you. So you have to be the one who's happy in your life. You know what I mean? Like, because other people, no matter what their opinions are, they don't have to live it. They don't have to live in your body and in your spirit and in your mind. Like, they don't get to a say on, you know, whether or not you've changed or realized something about yourself. Or even if, you know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, I don't think being trans is necessarily a choice. But I think if it was... I think that's a legitimate choice. You should make that choice for yourself. And I think, you know, choosing to be happy and choosing to love yourself and choosing yourself versus what other people think you should be doing, you know, that's important. And I will never fault anyone for choosing themselves and choosing what makes them happy, what makes them feel like that's what they need for their life. So I'm just going to say that and, you know... Like, I just think more people should be respectful of the fact that, like, people change. Life changes. Things happen. Like, you can't always be the same person that you were. And I don't think we should be. I think you should be growing. I think you should be changing. <gasps> oh, my God. My kimchi blush didn't make the move. I'm very sad. Okay. Oh, God. I wish I had one of those kits to, like, fix this. Oh, my God. This is so tragic. Anyway. Um... <sighs> my god okay so like you know what i mean like people change what you want changes you realize things about yourself that you didn't otherwise know you know like people evolve people should evolve if you're not evolving what the hell are you doing oh my god that's so much blush you know what i mean like don't you can't stay in the same place and that's like you know mentally physically emotionally don't don't stay in the same place just because it's easy. You know what I mean? Like, I think so many people would rather be unhappy because it's familiar. And they want to drag other people with them because nobody, if they can't be happy, why should anyone else? And, like, that's that's not acceptable to me. And that's that's a whole other issue. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I think people should be allowed to evolve and realize things about themselves we're not always going to be the same person we were yesterday you know like it took me a long time to realize that I was a lesbian but I wouldn't actually change the time in between because what like why what would that accomplish I'm happy with who I am I'm happy with where I am and nothing's going to change that. No amount of, you know, feeling sorry for myself about it is going to make it different. I am who I am. I realized when I realized, and that's what it is. Okay, so I got my blush down, answered two questions. Do I have any more? Okay. Oh, okay. Sweet. So I don't think this is going to be my last question, but this was a question I do remember. And I love this question um, because it's so much fun to answer. And it is, what is your favorite thing about butches? Uh, the answer to that is how much time do you have? Like I, I've made whole videos about the answer to this, which is everything. Um, I have kind of a weakness about the fact that butches and studs and masculine identifying lesbians are so very much like it's it's chivalry is a huge part of it i think the love of women is a huge part of it obviously um, i you know it, it's literally just everything everything is my favorite part of butches and studs and masculine people like everything every little part because they're amazing and wonderful and they make me feel seen and loved and heard and you know, there's just something special about lesbian masculinity. Like, I'm just going to say that. Like, I just feel like butches and studs and masks do it better. And that's just what it is. Um, sorry about it. <laughs> sorry about it, babe. But we, they just do it better. And it just makes me feel happy and seen and 
you know, I just, I found so much community, even in like non-romantic relationships, I found so much community and so much joy and heart and friendship and things that I never could have imagined. And like, not even in, like I said, not even in relationship circles, just in, you know, meeting other people and getting to know other people. So like, I don't know, for me, that's just what it is. That's, 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 I feel like I could make another whole video just dedicated to like all of the things I love about butches and studs and masculine aligned lesbians. I am actually planning to make a video about my love specifically of uh, masculine lesbians because I do think they don't get enough love. So that is a whole, whole other video that I'm going to make, but um, that is to come. So stay tuned for that. So I have one last question. I'm almost done with my makeup. Up and I'm actually really loving this look. Um, I can't see it quite yet, so give me a second. Um, so I think the last question that I received was from one of my friends. By the way, I haven't said anyone's name here because I don't want to like out anyone's Tumblr or you know whatever. And some of the questions were actually anonymous, but that's that's a whole other thing. Um, so the question was, what is what is your favorite cosmetics line to use, um, and what is your favorite shade? So, oh my God, you're putting me on the spot here. It depends on what for. I have fa different faves for makeup for like all different sorts of things because I think different companies are good at different things. Um, for instance, I have for years loved the MAC Full Coverage Foundation. It is a... Um, it's a not a clay foundation. What is the word I'm trying to use? It is a... Um, cream foundation and I, I have a special love in my heart for cream foundations so you know I love the MAC full coverage I think it's a really really amazing foundation for that um, but I also really enjoy everything Beauty Bakery does like I have so many things from Beauty Bakery um, it was my first time using it but I really like the um, Patrick Star concealer I really feel like that kind of gives me like shape tape vibes but better um so that i really love i really love trixie cosmetics obviously i love the um i love everything about trixie cosmetics i love kimchi cosmetics or kimchi chic cosmetics excuse me um i have bought a lot of stuff that i really enjoy from beauty bay um one of the one of my favorite hold on a second this is gonna okay where is it okay true and you know truly two of my favorite eyeshadow palettes of all time are the icy palettes from glam light i'm actually gonna i'm hoping to get more glam light palettes because they're so good um so you know it favorite cosmetics wise like it depends on what i'm looking to do what i'm hoping for like i i just love everything um shades wise again i love everything i love all kinds of shades red is always a good classic um i love a red i love a um matte i love like all of those fun things okay so i got these i i went to ross the other day and i got a bunch of mac li uh, lipsticks on sale i also got one from nars that i'm really excited about this one's called hot hot channel i thought it was hot chanel for a second um this is really pretty but i i need to wear this one because this is like a plummy color and it's called lovers only so you know we gotta um so yeah a favorite makeup and favorite shade like it depends on what kind of vibe i'm feeling you know favorite brand or favorite anything it, it just depends on the vibe it depends on what kind of look i'm trying to do it depends on what kind of feel i'm trying to give it depends on just how I'm feeling in that moment. Like right now, I'm obviously doing this very like purpley look. So this, uh, the eye is from Beauty Bay. It's their Midnight Palette. I just, I mean, tell me this is not so fucking stunning. Look at this color story and look at all those like sparkles and shimmers. Like it's so beautiful. I also have the other one, the green palette, um, the earthy palette, which gives me all kinds of like Virgo vibes. This is so stunning. Um, I love, I actually love, um, 
beauty bay like they have so many really amazing palettes so like it depends on the vibe i'm giving sometimes i really love a red i think i look really really stunning in um red eyeshadows and like a red just red look i think i pull off really really well i think i pull off purple green like just any color so i don't have a favorite shade to be honest because i just love everything and i know that's like maybe a cop-out answer but yeah i am feeling this look oh my god so cute so pretty so shiny chic and then look at this dress i got i know we don't whatever fast fashion but like got this dress from shein it is the cutest fucking let me go back it's just the cutest little dress and i know like i said i know fast fashion is bad but yeah, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I've really been missing making these videos. I've been missing doing makeup and doing looks and like talking about different stuff with my YouTube fam. I've actually surprisingly, despite the fact that I have not made a video in almost a year, I've had a lot of new subscribers. Um, so thank you to everyone who has subscribed and like, you know, commented and shown me so much love even in this last year where I haven't made a video um, I promise I'm going to be more on the ball let's not say promise let's say I'm going to work to be more on the ball <laughs> um just because like yeah i'm not uh not trying to promise something i don't know if i can do anyway um so yeah this is my new video this is my new setup i'm in a new state lots of good things lots of amazing things coming down the pike pipe pike what is that saying anyway i'm really really happy really really enjoying this so yeah um you know you know what to do like comment down below tell me your favorite part of this video tell me if you have any more questions bye see you all next video that it'll be a normal video like a video essay not like this unless you want to see more of these because i will do more looks where i put on makeup i just bought the juno and trixie palette so like tell me if you want to see shit <laughs> all right